Okay, everybody, I thought I would go over the uh, incident that happened with Lena out on the trail. Uh, I think that this is a situation that is more suited for those who are willing to uh, be patient um, and sort of understand where the horse is coming from and, and, and work to be reassuring and encouraging uh, compared to what we usually see in the horse world. Uh, which is usually um, some form of, of heavy intimidation. It's probably the best way to put it. And in my mind, I think that the, the idea that we would use fear to get over fear is in the end counterproductive. And uh, my the concept that I constantly try to talk about where we endeavor to be friends with our horses and have our horses be friends to us if there is such a concept with a horse, which I, I believe there is. And the idea being that they'll be able to find some trust, not through coercion, but through reassurance and uh, constant reminders that things can go well. So what I've got <clears throat> is uh, what I didn't show in the original video of me with Lena out and about. And we had a, a great ride overall. Um, but this is 31 minutes of us struggling. Now, I don't know if we're going to watch it all um, here. But I want to explain some of it. And then what I'll do is I'll, I'll tack the whole ride on at the end. Because I'm going to skip through some parts and get to some bits and pieces that are important. Uh, but we'll see how this goes. This is kind of off the cuff. And uh, we might as well just get started riding. I'm just going to turn down audio video. Now, Lena and I were out and about on this trail, and for some reason, she decided she wanted to stop right here. And it, there was nothing there. There was nothing that uh, was obvious. There was no weird stumps on the ground. There was nothing making any particular noise. Uh, there was some puddles on the ground there. Uh, and way ahead of us was uh, what sounded like a bit of a creek kind of thing. And um, Nina was just determined, absolutely 100% determined to not go. And what's happening here is that she's constantly making left-hand turns to escape. And I'm not really quick enough to stop it. And as I'm riding, the things that I think about when I'm riding, when a horse is really not interested in going in a particular direction, is how can I convince them that it's totally cool to go that direction? So here, we're actually going the wrong way. <laughs> we've, we've, we've made the wrong progress. We're going back the way we came. So every once in a while, I'll kind of let a horse release themselves or they'll find some relief from the area that we are in. Um, they'll pick up the pace, and I'll see if I can get them to stop, how much effort it requires. As you can see, I'm just riding alter, which is challenging. Um, and I remember doing a, a video where I did a, a ride with twine challenge. And the challenge was that when you ride with twine, um, putting more pressure on actually hurts your own hands. You don't get to wear gloves. So the idea is, well, how can you change a horse's mind when the amount of pressure you put on them hurts you more than them? Maybe. We don't even know. I mean, a piece of rope on a horse's face, uh, you know, just a halter, probably has, you know, a level of uncomfortableness, I would expect. Anyhow, so it's just one-to-one, -one, just on one-to-one -one power. Uh, no levers, no gimmicks, nothing. And we've turned ourselves around, and we're going to give this another go again. But it is just perpetual, same on the left-hand turn, persistence. And because I'm holding a camera, I actually had a little bit of trouble trying to keep her from turning. But generally, I would go a little, and then I would just try to block uh, the left-hand turn. In this case, Lena was turning a lot of lefts. So here she goes left again. 
And a lot of horses will actually have a very particular pattern. They'll want to go a particular way. They'll want to get that left eye or that right eye on something. And here, I'm actually backing Lena down a path. I have had a relatively decent amount of experience with Lena, obviously, when we go out and about. <laughs> and there are some cases where I have backed her 30, 40 feet uh, down a pathway, across a bridge, um, and oddly enough, she'll go. Uh, here she's fighting it constantly, and I'll have enough pressure on her that she can kind of make a little progress, but it's just going to be perpetually uncomfortable for the both of us. It's not going to be comfortable for either of us. And because she went left, I'm trying to turn her right. Does that make sense? So when you're working with a horse to get them to stay straight or to turn in a particular direction, uh, in this case, right, um, and she just keeps going left, well, we want to just keep asking for that right. We don't want to give up. We don't want to say, okay, fine, go left. Uh, even if I could turn her all the way around left, what I want to do is I want to turn her right. Um, and there, the camera got a little messed up, but it's not easy to hold a camera while arguing with a horse about going down a path that has no danger, uh, logical danger. Now, imaginary danger is a big deal to a horse, and they will they all really go a long ways to protect themselves or protect the both of you kind of idea, whether it's just me uh, or just her or, or she's actually thinking, you know, she's keeping us both safe. Um, but to, to get her to go down here, I have to constantly either hold and then when she stops sort of arguing or stops asking, then I can release and then we can go a little. When I'm asking to go a little, I'm just giving a little squeeze, but I like a little bump, bump. And as you watch this, <clears throat> as time goes forward, and we might watch the whole darn thing, um, but you'll see, you'll be able to predict when she's going to turn. And that's what I actually talk about when I'm doing this as well. But I want to lead you guys through this um, uh, if you're interested in, in understanding how this goes about and the things that go through my mind afterwards and during, that we we must take our time. Um, the rest of the ride was absolutely fantastic. You guys have already seen the rest of the ride before, and you've seen the rest of the ride after. And then we did uh, another 20 minutes or so, one way, totally silent. You know, I did the ASMR one where it's just sound. So that went really well. And there were absolutely zero issues. She had no problems. This is the only place she had a problem. But this is what is going to, or this can have the ability to define the rest of your ride that day, where you'll be like, okay, say for example, I didn't have the energy or didn't have the confidence or um, desire you know, you're like, ah, forget it. Let's just turn around and go the other way. There's a dozen other paths we could go on. Um, and you can kind of pick and choose your battles. There's there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with just saying, see here, I'm just, I just give a little bump, bump with my legs when I want to go. Uh, I don't try to kick. I definitely don't wear spurs. Um, I really want to use as little as it takes. And I just keep asking. It's not tiring to do that. You know, if you've ever been on a horse and you've been kicking and kicking and kicking, I have. I hate it. So I never do it anymore. I get exhausted. I just find myself mentally and physically tired of doing something like that. So what I have switched to is um, to just bug them. It's like poking somebody in the shoulder. <laughs> bump, 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 bump. Sooner or later, like, what do you want? And Lena knows, she understands, she knows that bump, bump, bump means forward. When we're in the arena and I just sit up straight, she goes. So she knows I'm sitting up straight, I'm squeezing my thighs a little bit, I'm asking for forward, and now I'm giving a little. So we work up to this, but that's the maximum I'll need to give. If she wants to tune that out for a little while, well, then she tunes it out for a little while. Um, meaning that she doesn't do anything. doesn't mean she's actually tuning it out. But we sat here for quite some time. And this is what I mean by there has to be uh, a dedication to the patients, to letting them think it through, to letting them know, never going to stop bugging them. There, that's all I'm doing with my leg. I'm just a bump, 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 bump. 
and it's quiet. I mean, it's loud. It's loud for her and I, but it's quiet <laughs> compared to plenty of uh, activities out there. Now, this is a method that I do. And I think about all those horse trainers out there that teach kick as hard as you can, uh, bring a crop and all that kind of stuff. And if that is effective, fine, I suppose. I mean, I probably could have grabbed a branch and started whacking away of some. That just It just doesn't sit well with the idea that I want her to know that I'll wait. I'll be patient, but I'm not giving up. This is very important to me. And it's more important to me than it is to her because I'm a human and I know better. Um, I think I do. <laughs> but you can tell she's she's quite alert. She's got her head up. Her her ears are forward. She's wondering what the heck is, is up ahead. There's some sound. It's water. She's quite sure something's going to come out of the woods, which something kind of does uh, in a little bit here. And... Uh, her, it's like imagining the boogeyman and, and then, I don't know, your window's slightly open and the wind rustles some papers on your desk. You're like, ah, I knew it was a ghost, but it's the wind. Um, horses' imaginations, I think, are wild. <laughs> I think they imagine all kinds of things. And the reason, the second reason, or one of the reasons, I don't even know what reason I'm on now. And I'm just, here we are, just keep bugging her. And I don't have to stop doing that. It's an easy exercise to do. The reason I want to stay low energy is because I actually do want her to be thinking about what's out there. But I want her to be thinking about what I want. You can see her ears check back with me quite often. I'm talking to her all of this as well. Um, and I'm actually happy to see that she checks back with me with, with her ears. It's a good thing. Uh, it's, it means that she's not always paying attention forward. Um, but I never give up. And... We keep our energy low, and we allow her to think, and we stay calm ourselves. And we know that we're in this for the long term. As I spent half an hour on this section, maybe maybe 25 minutes. <laughs> 25 minutes on 30 feet of trail. Maybe a little bit more, because once, once we made it past here, so we do make it past here. But once we made it past here, um, you know, she still stuttered and, and whatnot. And then when we had to come back, she was in a real big rush. So here she's got her head down. That's a really good thing. So she's checking back in. She's checking to see if she can turn. She's checking to see whether or not I'm paying enough attention. Um, and that's good. I'm actually quite happy that she's, she's checking in and seeing what's up. So she's made a little progress there. I turn her back around. And unfortunately, I kept, I did turn left. But I do believe I change up to where I ask for right-hand turns. So that when I'm blocking the left-hand turn, I'm actually asking right. And um, and we continue to ask for that. So we don't want to give up and say, fine, go left, even if we know we can come around. We do want to make an effort to continue to ask for the thing we asked for. And in their mind, it'll switch. It'll They'll be like, all right, I guess I better listen to the whatever turn or direction you're asking for. And she's very strong. I mean, Lena was free because she just runs through people's hands. And, you know, oh, there we go. On for a little ride. And I'm, I'm, I'm lightly asking for a stop, not holding on too tight, but I'm tight enough that I'm really consistent. And I let her go a little, let her go a little. She comes down to a walk. We stay really, really calm. And I let her walk until she slows and then finally stops. And then we can turn her around and check out what's going on. And, you know, just so happens, uh, there was a hiker. There's a guy up here. And uh, I tried not to get him on camera because I don't, I don't know who he is. And uh, I don't want to um, get people on camera that may not want to be in camera. But the whole conversation is in here. So... Uh, what I'll do is I'll, I'll tack this video on at the end, but, um, check that out. It's at, you know, like halfway through and we had a little chit chat. And the one thing that I think is really, really important is if you have an issue on the trail and it's because of a hiker, it's because of some dogs, it's because of whatever. And the person that inadvertently caused the problem is willing to chit chat with you 
try to do that. Um, there's a lot of there's 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 probably good evidence where I think there's a good cause to where if if you teach the horse that the thing that worried them is actually a friend, and the horse is not really going to know. But if you're talking friendly like like you do to everybody else, or like you do with your horses, you're talking friendly like to the person, you're very calm, and you kind of scratch and pet and reassure the horse as you go, then I think that that is effective to have them understand there was no reason to run in the first place. We just happened to come across a friend on the trail. Uh, don't you worry about it. Everything's fine. So having a little bit of a conversation, I'm just going to skip through this now that I think about it, because we can. And that went on for a little bit. And then... And then he left, and I say, okay, Lena, let's get going. And she's still kind of resistant to go, but I just continue on. But anyways, the point is is that I think it's very important to have them stand and think about, uh, you know, the trouble that they had of the thing that they had the trouble with while none of you have any trouble with it. Um, and so here we, we just get going forward a little bit more. And she, she did... Nicely for that. I think, I mean, we went a little ways. You can see we're going to go all the way back. Now, the bolt wasn't a big deal. We were already facing that direction um, by chance, and then something came up behind us. So if she was facing the trouble when it came, uh, I would, especially if I wasn't holding a camera, I'd be making a lot of effort to stop her from whirling. So I would be ready. I would be ready to kind of block. Uh, holding a camera makes it a lot harder, as you can see. And... Um, We don't want them to whirl. Kind of hard to keep your balance when that happens. Uh, but you can see this is the farthest we've made it. We haven't made it this far yet. This is, you can see down the pathway a little bit more. I mean, it's still resistant. She says, nah, I just really want to go that way. But I just keep on keeping on. And here, I think this is where I made a bigger effort to turn her the proper way. Because about halfway through, I was like, wait a second. And there was something in the stump. Um, I'm looking up here because my screen is up here for the one. So here I ask more for a right-hand turn. When she gives her face, you, what you want to make sure that when you get something, when you get at least the nose, that you release a little. They're going to want it back right away. So just keep asking. And I'm not asking for a backup here. I'm asking for a right-hand turn, which is what she's sort of struggling with. So when she gives me her face, I want to release a little bit, let her know, just need you to turn. And so when she has a little bit turn there, then we can have a bit of a stop or we can ask her to go a little bit. And yeah, she did, she did nicely for that. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't too big of a deal. But it is, the best way I can put it is a bit of a pain. Like it, this, is, this takes serious patience to work through. But this is the farthest we made it. You know? And not once have I had to do anything untoward. I haven't had to break a stick off of a tree or something like that. I don't carry, I've got a camera in one hand and my reins in the other. It's it's a challenge. Um, but here I am being a lot more persistent, making sure to ask for that right-hand turn because I tried to block the left. Now, a lot of horses will kind of, um, when they're, <laughs> or upside down, it's hard to hold the camera, but a lot of horses will kind of, they'll, they'll I don't know what to call it, but they'll bring their head down to get really, Lena's actually very good at, trying to, she'll bring her nose in and then out. And that out is to get you to release because sometimes you just can't hold on, especially if you don't have gloves or something like that. And they'll just pull the reins out of your hands or they'll pull you forward. Um, I don't think that there's a big deal about that. I think if you get the reins pulled out of your hands or you get pulled forward, just continue trying to get um, what you've been asking for because you're essentially just having... And you're having a bit of an argument, you know, aren't you? You're sort of saying, I want to go this way. And they're saying, I want to go that way. And you're saying, well, I want to go this way. <laughs> I'll go that way. And each of you make a little bit of progress here and there. Um, but your resilience is, their resilience even, can define the relationship. And which means that your resilience can define the relationship. And here she's got enough time to chew on ferns. Go figure. She won't turn around, but she's like, Ferns are the business. Let's eat some. And I'm still asking for a right-hand turn. I'm not giving up. 
She makes a little forward progress, but I just hang on and ask for that turn. And she's not, you know, freaking out. She's not sweating. She's not frothing at the mouth. She's not, she's just persistently asking as much as I'm persistently asking. And I can guarantee you, and I, you can see the results in this in the end. Um, I can guarantee that as long as you calmly maintain what you're asking for, uh, sooner or later they just say, well, okay, especially if it, if it, if it works out, especially if it's safe. You know, nothing happens. High alert. Horses, the ears up. What's that over there? And flicking of ears really quickly. You know that a horse is really worried. Um, but I just keep asking. And we're making it. We're getting down a little further here. I have to block the left-hand turn again. Wouldn't it be nice, maybe, if she just had an escape to the right instead of the left? One-sided horses. Just to the left. She tries. She really does try. So she makes a little progress back. But I just maintain, and I can't stress this enough, I really just have to say, I'm just going to be in it. I mean, she's chewing at the same time as doing this. So she's not, you know, overly, she tries to eat. So this isn't, um, I mean, it is a bit of a flight instinct that's really kicking in with her. She's like, I just don't want to go that way. It worries me too much. We started to go into the forest. <laughs> don't go that way. Horses are weird. Um, yeah. And and then now I have to actually make a left hand turn for once. So I wasn't actually prepared. It's hard to ride with one hand. Uh, so forgive me if it's, uh, this would have gone probably a little more efficiently uh, without the camera. But this is actually a great example of, of sometimes how we can uh, get into these situations. It's not easy. It's it's hard. You know, you, you get tired. Um, you get to where emotionally you just say, oh, I don't want to do this anymore. It's not fun. But we must know or we must accept that not all rides are going to be fun. Sometimes there's going to be trouble. And it's up to you to lead them through that trouble in a way that they come out as a winner, as a success. Um, and, and know, know your limits too. Like, right. If I got going just a little bit here, I could probably turn her around right now and be like, I won. I got you through a problem. We made it farther than we've ever made it. Everything was fine. Uh, I can't remember how far I did go. I think I went a little ways down a bit more. And I said, you know, I think we've come far enough that this has been a success. And all along the way, I want to, um, point out or see a scratch a lot. I want to advise or encourage that you're constantly being reassuring. You give some good scratches. You give some rubs. You're quiet. You let your reins down. When we're going smooth, my reins are loose. I don't have them tight. They're not. They're not hanging on to her at all. They are loose and free. And we made it pretty good. We made it pretty far. And she had a little stop. She's like, I don't know. It sounds like you're taking me to the ocean or something. I don't know what was going on in the, in, down the path. I can't remember this path very well, but I know there's water down there. And uh, maybe that's the problem. Maybe there's something in the air. Maybe. I mean, a lot of people ask whether or not, what if there's a bear or something like that? She can smell it and it's really worrisome. And I think that, yeah, maybe. But, you know, the last hiker made it through. <laughs> He's fine. Um, and so what I want Lena to accept is that if, if there is a bear, I'll take care of it, right? If there is trouble, I'll work on it. Uh, or I'll teach you that it is in trouble. And this steady progression of being sort of kind or being reassuring while being firm, like, nope, we're definitely not doing what you want. We're definitely doing what I want, uh, but we're going to do it at a pace that is comfortable, uh, hopefully for both of us and throughout the whole ride we were fine and as i said once we were done this part we went back the other way because i wasn't into doing it anymore i i i myself and this is why i say know where your limit is know that you don't have to 
like if you were riding with other people and like, no, we're definitely going down this path or something like that. And you said, you know, I don't think I have as much energy as you guys to make it down here. Um, know that limit and be okay with it. It's not nothing to be ashamed of. There's nothing to be uh, shy to say that. Um, I myself just thought, you know, there's a point in time where I'm just going to, I'm going to stop doing this. It's, it's too much trouble. I don't know if she actually, did she make that turn herself? She made that turn herself. But you see, she's blinking. She's she's not, you know, totally wide-eyed. She's not completely freaking out, but she definitely would like to head back the other way. And then just keep asking. And you just hold, and you hold, and you wait to release. You're looking to be able to release. It's one of the reasons why she's able to kind of bump her head a little bit is because I'm giving that tiny bit of release. My la my reins go loose here. Loose. Got to let go as soon as you get something. And so I think it's pretty soon here that I just say, you know, I think we've made it far enough. This is pretty good. Uh, we've done great. And then turn around. I think this is it. Yeah. So just kind of waited for those last two steps. But without, I don't want her running back the way we were going. So while, even if you've kind of finished the direction you're going in, we don't want them taking charge of the ride from that point forward and you become a passenger because you like going fast. You like kind of going where you want to go uh, or at a speed you want to go, which is kind of quick and it's fun. But we want them to continuously be thinking about, are we asking for a go? Are we asking for a walk? Are we asking for a trot? Are we asking for a canter? Not what they want to do. Otherwise, you're just going to have a runaway horse. So it isn't about overpowering them. It isn't about um, being dominating. It's a lot about safety. And we want to let them know that we're asking for these things because it's important to us. And the reason it's important to us is because it keeps us safer so that they have to have a think about when they do the things they do um, and not just do them, not just indiscriminately, just like, well, I'm out of here, and uh, and not bother to listen to whether or not you actually said go or whether or not you said walk or whether or not you said trot. And these things are very, very important. And all along the way, we reassure them and tell them they're good little horses and all that kind of stuff, even if they aren't really. But every time she listens, this is an opportunity to say, Thanks, you did great. Uh, even if it is just to, to have her nose come back to straight, even if it is to have a little bit of stop, even if it is to kind of put her head down, to relax, to turn her ears back and listen. There she has a bit of a shake, and I think I said, okay, let's go. But I'm checking in along the way. I'm checking to see whether or not she is going to slow down or care about if I want her to stop completely because I want to look at something or do something. But she'll pick up a pace really fast. And I'll say to her, I really don't want you to go at that fast of a pace. Take your time. We've got a long ride ahead of us. You're going to wear yourself out. Because I've got a plan in my head. Um, and she has no idea where we are because she's a horse. <laughs> and sooner or later, we just kind of get boogieing along just normal. Um, we get to a pace that I'm comfortable with, that she seems to feel comfortable with, which is in between of what she wanted to be and really slow. And every time they listen in, if they get softer and softer, because we're looking for really, really soft, we want to get what we get in the arena. So when I'm in a fenced in place, what do I get? I'm out on a trail, I want to compare the two. My bar is, what do I get when I'm in the arena? When I'm just practicing, when I'm just training quietly, here's the spot we were stuck at. Stop there. Let her know. It's totally cool. It's a different direction to her. I don't even know if she makes the equation. But the point is, is that all along the way, I've got a, a level, a bar, a standard that says, this is what I know you can do. Let's see if we can do that under adverse conditions. And the more you practice under those adverse conditions, the things that you do without those adverse conditions, uh, the better that it gets under adverse conditions and the better it will be when you get back to being in a calm place. Because everything that you're doing is a replication of what you've done. And you can see her head's getting lower. She's getting quieter. She's making a better walk. And her go is a little snappier uh, to, 
to the lighter uh, feel that I offer. And, uh, you know, we just wander on and everything was great. And I get back to what she is when we're just practicing, when we're just in the arena. And then I can finally enjoy the forest ride that I originally came out for. And she did fantastic. So that's, you know, I guess we went through most of the video, but I'll, I'll tack it on to the end and you can see here and listen to what I'm doing at the time as well. Um, but I hope that makes sense. And if not, of course, ask any time. Um, let me know. But that's my procedure for dealing with things like this. I will do my very best to spend as much time as needed, to be as quiet as I possibly can, but firm, consistent. Um, and sooner or later, they just, yeah, okay, cool, let's do this. And everything works out. So that's it for this one. See you guys in the next one. I'd like to turn around and has succeeded in turning around because I'm one handing it and didn't block her in time. So I'm just going to stop her here because it's actually not bad practice to just say, well, if you want to get moving with your feet, you have to go this way. So I give a little, a little tiny bump bump. She says, no, no, we need to go this way. And I say, no, no, we need to go this way. And we have time for this. We have time to sort of have a discussion about direction. Now she can have a think. Ears are everywhere. Say, let's go. She says, oh, turn around? Nope. Go back the other way. Now this is not uncommon. So for anybody who is getting into trail riding a bit, there is, uh, there is, there are times when horses will just kind of do their own thing a little bit. And uh, you have to have discussions with them. And we have to remember that Lino was, was uh, one of those horses that sort of just walked through people's hands a little. So I have to be a little more persistent. But this is, this is where we just kind of get patient. She still goes around. Okay, I'm going to get my reins into my hands a little bit better. I'm relying on light, sort of inaccurate contact. So I'm going to come out a little further with my hand. I wasn't able to do that earlier. And now I'm going to block with my right. So we block, just hold, hold light till we get a change. And now a little leg. Now left hand, little leg. Yeah. So we get straight. Now right hand, hold, wait, just light. Doesn't have to be a lot, but we're gonna have just as much of a discussion with her as she's having with me. And just hold and wait. So she comes around, and then a little leg for forward. And off we go. And that's our discussion. But that kind of discussion can be, you know, it requires patience. Well, here we go again. So say, no, no, I'm not giving up. She says, neither am I, and I respect that. Say, no problem, but you'll have to trust me. This is a great path to go up. And the sooner you get this stuff sorted out, the better. And it can take time. And if you go trail riding with people who won't tolerate any of this, they're like, well, just whack it. Well, maybe you should find better trail partners. You just wait. Nina's backing up down the trail. Fantastic. I don't have a problem with that. We can back the whole trail if we want to. I'd like her to turn. So there's her face. She says, okay, I'll turn. It's going forward, but I'm just going to hold. Just holding. Holding and waiting. It's amazing. We're side passing back up the trail. So that's okay. There's a lot, there was a little change there. If she wants to practice side passing up the trail, I'm okay with that too. <clears throat> I'm just 
of weight. There we go. There's a little change. This is how about that boot? There. Good. There. Now I can totally release. I might even give a little scratch. So you're good. Don't leave. Oops. Control the camera a bit. There we go. And a little leg. Straighten out. Straighten her head. Straighten me. <laughs> and then wait. And throughout none of this do I try to kick or whip or whack. We just be patient. Because we've got the time for this. This is the purpose of this. The purpose of me heading out is to get Lena back into <clears throat> the idea that we're going to trail ride and it's okay that it's just her and I. She might be a little worried that it's just her and I. She's when when horses feel like they want to go somewhere where you're not asking them to go, we can kind of think of it as um, that they'd like to lead the herd a bit. And you say, eh. it's all right. So we'll wait here. This is where we can have a bit of patience too. have her think. She can think to herself, this guy's never given up. It's true, I'm not. Just like any of the groundwork or any of the work I do in the arena, we have an option. It's a safe option, so there's no danger here that I'm aware of. <laughs> I don't see or hear anything in the bushes. Yeah. So I just say, well, I'm ready to go, let's go. So I'll just give a tiny squeeze. I see she's listening, her ears telling me she's listening. She says, I don't want to go forward, though. And I say, yeah, but we have to. So I'm happy with her head down. I don't have a problem with that. She's still thinking of backing up. And I'm okay with that, too. I just keep on... I'm essentially just kind of wiggling my legs a little. That's it. She knows what it means. Works great in the arena. For me to have to yell any louder than this... Um, is just using force, so I just keep bugging her. Cause she's moving her feet, she just has to be moving her feet backwards. And we have patience, lots and lots of patience. And just wait, because I know that I can communicate. This communication technique does work with her. <laughs> Another step backwards. Well, how far are we gonna go back of this trail? All right. But it, I think it's a comfy seat and it's a beautiful scene. I mean, you can't go wrong sitting here anyways. I mean, if you were to bring out a lawn chair, drink or something like that, would you complain sitting here? Me neither. So I just say to Lena, I got all day. I know you do too. You wonder, I think about when, I, when I'm sitting here doing stuff like this, I think, what, what is going through her head? Like, why doesn't she go forward? What is over there that she's like, nah, this isn't my jam. But I am, I'm just, just wiggling. You see, it's enough. We'll get going. I'm sure of it. <clears throat> Cause it'll bugger you know it'll be like luke chewing on another horse's leg sooner or later they're like ah oh, all right fine i like how e lena's right ear is back and her f her left ear is forward like she's got she's telling me let's go that way but her her other ear is like let's not go that way now there is the sound of water ahead and uh, I haven't really tackled water with Lena in a while. You know, she's not excited. We're not in trouble. She's not wide-eyed and scared and, and all that business. She's just staying. So we just persist. Sun's coming through a little bit. That's nice.
Some people might say, why so patient? How long are you going to sit there and do that? And my answer to that is just as long as it takes. And why? Well, I've been in the crowd that, you know, the, the, the idea is just to kick as hard as you can kick or start whacking or start ripping or whatever. And I haven't changed. I'm still just slowly bumping. Belina's getting a little more thoughtful as to what is going on here. She's thinking. She's like, well, hmm. Doesn't seem like there are any other options. But she's not turning around anymore. So have we made progress? Yes. Yes, we have made progress. There's a little mosquito, I think, right on her ear. I'm dying to... Oh, she got it. I was going to stop and, and, and kind of deal with that. So, some of you may want to fast forward. Probably. But this is part of my world. This is what we do. There's another step backwards. <laughs> Lena, can you please go forward? Please. Is, are you sure? Yeah, oh yeah, I'm sure. She's still thinking. Nope, not that way. But we have blocked the turnaround. Might even have her head go a little to the left. Nope, not that far. <laughs> I lost. So I turned back around. There we go. Something light. I don't have to do a lot. So she's made a little ground. I'm going to have to gather up my reins a little bit to be ready a little bit more. There. It's a few steps. Nice to make it past this little puddle here and go forward. So just keep bugging her. There. Whoa! Going around. Block. Block. Block it. So we'll hold with the right rein. Just ask. Keep asking. Don't don't settle for a left hand turn here. Keep holding with the right. And she says, I don't know, are you sure? go a little bit back turn and there's a human so there's a person here hello oh no come on by it's all good yes no she was uh, surprised it's all good did it worry you Maybe, yeah. yeah. Into it. It's all right. Seen people kicked by horses before. Yes, yeah, it could happen. Um, yeah. She was more interested in escaping. Yeah. So then it's just up to me to ride it out a little bit and have her think about it. Yeah. And it's actually good to have a conversation, yeah. uh, to be honest, because she can say, oh, just another person. Yeah, just another person. Yeah, but I appreciate you stopping. It's really oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, anyway, horses rule, so I'm concerned. All these trails here, yeah, we made by horse people. It's true, that's true, and quite then, a few, uh, yeah. See down that, that gate there, now at the beginning way down there, yeah. right down the Mill Creek, there's a sign that says etiquette. Yeah. Horses first, yeah, yeah. Joggers second, yeah. Hikers, and bikers third. Yes, that's true, yeah. They're starting to get more and more of the bikes on them when you're coming on these corners pretty fast sometimes. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it hurts to get a bike against your flesh. Yeah, yeah, and uh, it hurts for bikers to have a horse against their flesh. Yeah, yeah. So, so no, they haven't figured that part out sometimes. Yeah, so. back in the old days, I've been on these trails for a lot of years. Yeah. Years ago. Yeah. I don't know how many years ago, maybe twenty. You couldn't even walk through here. Yeah. You couldn't, oh. you couldn't walk through here. Oh. In the winter, when it was frozen solid, you could. Yeah. But it's just so many of these creeks and so much just yes, you couldn't yeah. get through here. Very wet. And especially, yeah, especially the other part going down to Mule Creek Road. Yeah. You couldn't get through there. Yeah. In the winter, I'd jog up the, up the road, and then it was frozen, I'd go in here, then I'd go down. Yeah. Before that, those, those bridges. 
Okay there, little guy. Don't be booting me. <laughs> she won't. Okay. She's not a kicker. Awesome. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Lena, what do we do with you? So worried. Just continue on. Okay, so what happened there, right? This is all part of trail training. Might actually be discouraged if someone to come out on trails to have that sort of stuff happen. But if you can keep your seat and all that kind of business, it's all right. There goes my phone. Okay, Lena, let's go. Come forward, please. Thanks. So we'll try again. And, uh, and just make sure that we have ourselves always ready. Um, sure, riding can be quite relaxing, but horses are weird. You know, they, they worry about all kinds of stuff. I still haven't made it past this one point. I'm just going to keep asking. Say, Come on, Lena, you can do this. Let's go a little bit forward. Come on, you made it past that guy and he was a nice guy. And it's a real joy to come across people who care. Um, they, they don't mind at all. I think Lena's having a poop. Uh, they don't mind at all to be part of a little bit part of that training process in a way. And we can just, you know, try hard. Try hard to, to get... Oh, I just noticed something kind of cute. Look, let me put something in there. Like a little rock, painted rock. Try hard to work together, you know, the, where that person was afraid of being kicked. And Lena was afraid of being whatever hurt by a, a person, a, somebody walking on the, on the pathways. <clears throat> now Lena keeps backing up, I'm really only holding one side, but she won't turn because she doesn't want to go the other way. But we're just going to keep asking. And I'm hoping I can introduce her to the idea that everything is just fine. Just keep going. Everything will be okay. Come on Lena, let's go. It's a little bump bump. You just ask. She says no problem. And now I can relax a little bit. Because she feels a little bit better. She feels like she's going to kind of. Uh, maybe not. See? Fool me once. So I'm going to ask for the right hand turn again because she went left and I tried to block it. There we go, and light, light, just keep being persistent. You know, you're not going to back down this whole trail, are you? Because it's a long way to go backwards. You could just turn around. Good girl. That's good. Come on. There you go. We're just holding. We're just holding. Not a lot. Probably maybe a little more than before. Maybe a good five to six, seven pounds or so. I'm not, not going to get tired for it. I'm just going to ask. There we go. There we go. Tiny change. You know, you're not going to chew on twigs, are you? So she's got enough, uh, you know, availability to chew on stuff. So, in theory, we should be able to walk the trail. 
And again, I'm totally cool just going backwards. There's mosquitoes around here. So just hold. Well, that way. Come on, Lena. Okay, back down the trail. Here we go. But I still want a right hand turn. I'm still not going to settle for a left. And there is our right hand turn. And now we just relax. Find a real peaceful spot to be in your mind. Sun's coming out, it's looking good. <sighs> right? You want to find a nice peaceful place to be. Lena says, what's that structure over there? So I'm gonna ask for forward. There, we got a little forward. Don't want to go up there. Looks like a path, but it isn't. Just keep asking. Don't give up on the right-hand turn. Can't stress this enough. Just keep asking for the right. Because you're not doing anything Let's see, what's the best way to explain this? You're not doing anything that she isn't. Right? She's asking for left and you're asking for right. And she's hoping that what she gets is a win. And she's put herself, holy cow, I don't want to go in here, you crazy oars. Turn around. Thank you. Not that way. There. Back on the trail. It is hard to hold the camera while doing this. Okay, a little forward. Lock, lock, lock. There. Okay, a little forward, please. Little bump, bump. There we go. Good. And forward. <sighs> okay, little squeeze. I can't believe how long it's taken us to get through this part of the trail. That was a struggle. And through here. And success. Now, back to your relaxing feeling. Back to taking a deep breath. <sighs> you know, see how that works? Keep encouraging forward movement. Again, we scratch it too, right? We say thanks. I really appreciate you finally kind of getting along with what I want. Everything's safe. It's all good. And she says, my goodness, are you sure? But we just have to keep considering that one or the other of us, we're getting closer to the water. He's like, I don't like water. Come on, Lena, a little more. But admittedly, I feel like we're getting, you know, sort of at that, that, that uh, limit of how much either of us are going to tolerate the other in a way. I just say, well, a little bit more, just a little bit more. And that's a feeling that you're going to get. You're either going to have it or you're not going to have it as a, as a horse person, I guess, a horseman, horse rider, where you'd be like, hmm, where's my limit? And wherever your limit is, is okay. Right? I'll give her some scratches a little bit. I'll say, you know, you're really, you're being brave. I'm really uh, impressed with you. You're really trying hard. I know it's exploding your little brain. But we'll do this together. So, to get this done, you kind of got to be a good friend. Where they don't want to be away from you. So there's a person way down there. Just walking along. And I want Lena to be a little bit more used to. There's a person and a dog for that matter. You guys can't see us way too far away, but Lena and I can see a person walking. 
with the dog. And she's thinking, what do I do? And I'm saying, let's go forward. So I give a little squeeze, a little bump up, and we'll just ask. In fact, we'll grab her attention briefly there. Because she might kind of tune out that little bump bump. And now I stop bump bumping at all. My legs are off. Oh, nope. Well, let's see. Just try again. You say, I know you wanted to go left, but I don't. So I'm just going to hold, hold, hold and release, hold and release, hold and release, hold, <laughs> hold, just wait, release, hold. And wait. I'm going to do just a little bit more and then we're going to turn around. There we go. Good girl, Lena. You really toughed that one out. Thank you. Okay, a little bit forward, please. A little bit forward. Now wait till she gets light on me. And then we're going to turn left around. And slow down. Okay, I don't want her to go running up the trail. I'm just gonna hold and wait. Ask her to wait. You see how she's fighting my hands a little. She says, I don't want to, I want to get going now. I say, yeah, but you have to be patient. Going home is fun. I get it. But, whoa, this is her strong, eh? There, scratch, nope, wait. She says, no, I don't want to. But you have to scratch, hold, wait there, release, release, scratch, chill, find a happy place. That's an interesting thing to do. <clears throat> hold, not even back up a smidge. She doesn't know that I'm not trying to turn her around, right? She thinks maybe I'm trying to do the same pattern. But I'm just saying to her, can you please just stay in one spot and stop eating everything? Just find a happy, comfortable, quiet place to be. And we'll release all pressure here. Alert. Look at these ears. Worried. She says, can we go now? Wait. Good. That's what we want, a little bit of that. Now we can go a little, but slow. Hey, listen to my hands, please. So when you do start getting going, they might not listen to your hands. They might be like, good, we're finally going. Let's get out of here. And you say, yeah, but you still have to kind of slow up when I ask, or stop when I ask, so you check that out as you go. Say, we can go home. But slowly. And uh, I know a lot of um, people say, well, how do you how do you get a horse to slow down going home? Just keep checking it out. Just keep slowing up. Here, we'll ask her to slow. That was very light. So I'll get her to go and scratch her. Say thank you. Now we're hoofing it. Okay, so that's sort of the hard part of a trail riding training is uh, encountering other people, uh, having that uh, discussion. Okay, I'm gonna slow her here. That's good, that was very good. The scratcher and leg, light leg. That's your poopoo, Zina. You poo pooed all over the place. Okay, her head's down now. She's much more relaxed. We're going to ask her to stop again. That's light. Super light. Scratch. No, I didn't say go. So be careful of that. We still want to sort of set the pace. I'm going to back her up. One, two, three. After rest. She's alert. A big shake is good. Okay, a little tiny bit of leg. Off we go. And chill. Really bring all your energy down. 
so that they meet you down rather than you always having to meet them up. All right? Wow, what a training session today. It's trees, a little bit of fog out there. Amazing. Okay, we'll ask her to stop. Oh, that was so light. She almost just responded to the word stop. Scratches for that. Thanks, Lena, you can go now. Okay. Wander on. So, that's sort of how trail training works for me. You guys don't have to do that, obviously. It doesn't have to be your thing. You can do as you've been doing, or do as your friends encourage you to do, or whatever seems good. I have taught Lena that I would stick by her side, be firm, but gentle, never give up. And I promise that I won't put her in danger. We'll introduce her to dangers, but she won't be in danger. The danger is in her mind. If you go up this way, Lena, I'm going to be blown away. Seriously? Nope. Off we go. Most horses are fantastic uh, at direction. Lena has gone the wrong way. And I don't know if she knows it, but either way, it's a gorgeous ride anyway. So let's just do it. We'll go where Lena wants to go. Where are we going up? You know, you're going to have to come back down this thing, right? Trail riding is great uh, exercise for everybody. Horse and rider, you have to ride a little different compared to being in an arena. Just beautiful. Off we go. <laughs> Didn't want to eat that, whatever that was. Well, that's probably kind of the end of the training portion of this video. I think I'll take some video of just being quiet. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next one, which might be the one after this one, which is going to be, or before this one, which will be just riding. <laughs>